are we here because um, we are here because um, people from Moments Festival uh, are, are doing um, uh, talks with, with artists or musicians. They just invite people and, and, and just put in the same chat and, and just uh, put to talk. So this is not an interview. They wrote me like they wrote you. I am the same and you are the yeah. same than me. So they, they said, okay, we want an artist from Spain that worked for bands and another one from outside of Spain. Okay, so we, we was thinking about it and, and they want to, to invite you. So this is not an interview, but of course it's the first time we meet or we see. So yeah. it's hard to, to start talking about everything, no? So uh, I, I just make a, a little brief with some guidelines. So I will ask something and we can start talking, okay? About everything. I have some ideas. I don't know if you, you know my, my work or you know me. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with your work. I've seen it seen it uh, pop up several times over the years and uh, taken a little look at it as well now to sort of refresh myself. But yeah, a lot of it is, is familiar to me. I know there is a lot of people in Instagram and there is a lot of people now working for bands. So that's good. Because I remember yeah. when I start, I started 20 years ago, but when I start uh, living of music work, um, here in Spain, there is um, people working for that. There is only four or five guys that, that making guard for bands, but outside Spain, there's a lot of people. So uh, to me, or for me, it's, it's like uh, now it's, we, we make a big change because now there is a lot of artists here in Spain working for, for bands and there is not a competition. It's like, we are all friends. So Excellent. that's good. Yeah. And, and we are always following people outside of Spain and it, it's fine to understand how it works, everyone, and, and how we can uh, trade some, some ideas with them. So I'm following you uh, from years ago and I, I fell in love first time I saw your art because it's very similar to my ideas. Okay, it's, it's, it's like forest, uh, nature, uh, animals, but we'll talk about it. But now I, I want to introduce you, okay? For, for the people you don't know, but I, I know you are more, more know it than me. Um, <clears throat> you are from uh, South Wales, yes, yeah. right? In a, you, you live in a rural town. Yeah. It, it's, why, yeah. It, it's what I, I saw. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. I, I mean, I live, I don't need, I don't really live in a town at all. So I live about a 20 minute drive from the nearest town, but even that town is pretty small. So um, mm -hmm. I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of out in the sticks, got hills and mountains behind me, forests over that way, more uh -huh. hills and mountains this way. You can probably hear sheep outside. You'll probably hear them as we're speaking. Yeah, there's sheep all over the fields here. There's cows in the forest here. There's, I got chickens outside and oh yeah, yeah so I'm, pro I'm kind of out. I, I I've been out here for about five years now, so I'm kind of just used to this being. That's what I can always hear in the background when I'm working and I'm being just surrounded by animals. And you open the door and chickens come running over to you and things. Oh, but that's nice. Um, but it's a it's a really nice environment to live and work in, and especially to balance out. Um, when you get too deep into the work and you just need to take a break, the, the best, the, what I found to be the best thing is just going outside and just doing some gardening, ten, mm -hmm. tending to the vegetables and things like that. And it's so simple, but switching up into a simple task, pulling some weeds or digging some, you know, uh, planting some seeds or whatever that might be. Um, yeah, really. Uh, I think you, you are uh, in the perfect place to, to work for, <laughs> for something creative because you don't have, um, you have an, um, noise from cars, from people. Uh, if you need to, to relax your mind, 
it's so easy because you must yeah. open the door and just well it, it works both ways because in, in one sense if you want to if you want to relax your mind you can go outdoors and um it it kind of puts things in perspective for you so if if you're getting super stressed out about a, a project you can't quite figure out or you've been just working too intensely and you need to unwind from it you can step out and if you walk up on a hill or mountain the, the perspective of that makes you realize how maybe the thing you're worrying about is not as quite as important in the grand scheme of things and you can kind of get perspective on it and go back in fresh with a with a bit of a, a fresh mind but then at the same time being in this environment is also super inspiring so you might go out and actually be bombarded even even though people think the countryside is so peaceful there's so much going on all the time you know and just of different animal noises and bird songs and just animals coming and going and things yeah from a tiny microscopic level to a huge huge level yeah, so yeah. um so it's kind of impossible if you were if you were stuck in the studio and you had no inspiration for something and you just went out for a walk for half an hour it'd be hard to come back without some good ideas or some inspiration yeah. from something you've observed that you want to figure out or some pattern that you've seen that you would have never dreamt up you know so um yeah there's plenty there to either either inspire you or um level you out in 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 a in a cool way to sort of set, you know set set you back into recognizing your very small contribution in a much a much bigger yeah. wider world. yeah 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 that, that the difference goes uh j just think I, i'm living in a city near barcelona uh, i just have a flat uh, inside the in in the center of the, the the city so i have a lot of people a lot of cars a lot of neighbors uh it's so hard to me to to take a break break and walk just alone i have the beach near i, I have the beach right. in five minutes walk it's fine but of, of course there is a lot of people there because there is a lot of bars and okay you can go to the to the sun and just relax there and see the the sea so mm -hmm. but but it's so hard to me because uh, always here i feel stressed you know uh, it's so hard so the first time i saw a video from you talking with john basley mm. my friend john basley um, yeah. <laughs> he's a very nice guy <laughs> yeah, right. um the first time I, i saw that video walking into the forest just talking about how you take some some objects from nature and then you you inspired by work to work you know so how important is that for me it's, it's super important uh how around you have the things you have around so I, i'm so jealous jealous to, to to see you are living there in 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 a beautiful place and i know it helped you a lot to work but that, that's all Sorry, that's i all. lost my um my chat window just went tiny and i can't get it back to come back your up. your what <laughs> my my chat window on here just disappeared and i can't figure out how to see it again what are you using uh macintosh let me see yeah do you have the um, the the key uh, there is a key that that make all a split don't know okay i kind of got it back Okay, yes. Yeah. Nice. Okay, got it. Yeah, an email, an email flew in, and I hit the email to close yeah, it yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. Went to that, and then this just disappeared. So, yeah. Sorry. I've technology. Technology. Okay. So I, I'm I'm work with technology always with computer because um, the difference between us, but well, there is a lot of difference, of course. But but the the um, the word difference is you are a, an illustrator. Mm. A real illustrator. I'm not an illustrator. Uh, I, 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 I am a graphic designer. Yeah. It's too different. We work with the same ideas of um, illustration, but you draw that, and I use all engraving, like mm. Gustave Doré. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or free copyright. So I'm, I'm trying this, the, to do the same, but I can't uh, draw by myself. 
I'm not a good illustrator. So for me, the, the, the computer uh, saved my life or, or teach me to work. So yeah, yeah. I, I spend a lot of time, I spend a lot of time uh, in front of computer. So uh, I think I, I am a professional of, of, of the computers, you know? Yeah, I, I'm, I kind of, I dip in and out. So I'll use, com I'll use computer when I need to for a certain period of time, but then I might not use it for a, a, a long time as well. But I think in terms of our um, similarities and differences between the kind of work we do, I see it as being that primarily I'm an illustrator mm -hmm. and I feel comfortable illustrating and drawing, but in, in, the, in the way that I work in poster design, it's kind of divided up into, I guess, three main parts, which would be the design portion at the start, figuring out the design and the layout and what I'm going to do. Then, in the cent then the centerpiece is the actual illustration that, and the drawing work takes up a certain period. And then when, when I've got that, then I'll put it together. And the third portion is pulling all of that together and making the final piece. Mm -hmm. So for me, I feel very comfortable. Um, I feel very comfortable. The illustration bit in the middle is the kind of, is the bit I feel most confident and comfortable with, but it's the design part is the really hard part for me. You know, that's like, that's the, the biggest challenge of all, like not, not the drawing so much, but just the designing. Whereas you're yeah. coming from, yours is kind of flipped around. So you're saying, you know, that the, you, you don't uh, feel com comfortable being able to do the illustration part, but you do, you can do the design part, you know? So it's like, yeah, yeah we're yeah. coming from kind of opposite places there. Yeah. But, but, but you are, you are so good um, uh, working with a computer because I saw, uh, for example, uh, your col the colors you use, the palette mm -hmm. colors used, it's super, um, Recognizer, like it's mm. always in English, Recog recognize it. Because yeah, when I saw a poster from you or an artwork from you, I recognize you not only for the illustration, uh, just for colors. I, I, I know it's it's a piece of you because you have yeah, a, that's really, that's a really interesting. Yeah, yeah, I would have never thought of that being a recognizable thing for my, my work because I've always really struggled with colors. Like, I think it's hard, a really the, a lot of the work I used to do, the, I, the, the colors were very desaturated and I would never really commit to using very bright, bold colors. And I wanted to, but they're really, really hard to use, I think. And I'm trying to, it, people, people often, or I, I might come into a project thinking I want to make a really bold, bright, psychedelic colored poster. But if you throw in all the colors, if you throw in a lot of colors, it just ends up absolute chaos and it, it's, it's never going to look good it's never going to really um you have balance and focus to it and in fact if you look back at a lot of the psychedelic posters um that us guys would really look up to as incredible pieces of work they actually often will use only two really bright colors it convinces it feels like it's a very yeah. colorful poster but it might just be um a lot of very monotone tone, or desaturated colors and really earthy tones and then one or two really bright colors and they're the kind of things I'm trying to get better recognizing you know from really studying it and figuring out oh yeah actually this thing feels very colorful but it's maybe it's only one or two bright colors and some gold and everything else is earth tones you know and that's something I've kind of discovered but still don't feel completely comfortable and confident doing it it's always a bit of an well a big a big experiment with color and and actually that's another thing where if I I feel fine, you know, I've, I've drawn since I was a child and I feel the illustration part, I know I can do it, um, but the the bigger challenge for me is, is the colors for sure. Like if, if I can pull off, a, if I can make a poster and I'm really happy with the color balance in it, or, or if I've dared to make it a lot brighter, make the colors a lot more saturated and manage to find a good palette, that's like, that's something I'm, I'd be a lot more pleased with, you know, than illustrating anything. <laughs> Yes, yeah, a, a huge challenge. But that's interesting that you, I wonder where you said that you, you feel like you recognize the work that I do. It could be, I suppose I consistently have always used the same sort of background paper colors, those sort of parchmenty craft papers and things like that is the thing I very often go to to kind of retain a certain aesthetic to it. And it's just the way I like it to look. I kind of figure that 
if you're going to have um, if you if you're going to pick a paper to print on, make the paper something mm -hmm. interesting too. You know, have it have some some grain and texture in it, or have a an interesting color going on in there as a base rather than just a black or white background or a solid color even. Yeah, that, that that's a good a good uh, way to to make something more natural or mm -hmm. give give a, a natural look to the to a digital poster. So it's yeah, fine. but also but but also in the physical poster, then it means what I like about it is that every, if you're using one of those spackle tone papers mm -hmm. where a little flex in it, it means individually everyone's poster is going to look different just because it's going to have a different arrangement of yeah, flex. Yeah. In it. So every single one is going to be unique, even more unique than it already is, which is a, a cool thing to push further and further towards, you know, in, in, the, in terms of putting out physical, collectible, interesting pieces of work, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, but it's, it's, a, it's an important part, the color and texture, it, it's a super part from mm -hmm. you. So it's so recognized and yeah, it, it's so fine to do that and think your work uh, to make always um, doing the same way. You, you, you must to, to grow and, and experience more colors or more palettes and introduce more things. But it, it's, it's so good for you if you can repeat and then add a little changes, only a little changes or a little updates. So yeah, that's good. Um, also, I think with the colors, we, we've, I often, I've made it because I've definitely come from the, the background of working for lots of metal bands, hardcore, but mm -hmm. I mean, I grew up doing that, like playing in bands, making artwork for other bands I was surrounded by. And it was always metal and hardcore bands. So everyone wants black t-shirts and yeah. dark colors yeah. and things like that. So I've come from that background and, and I know that that is for sure a big part of my audience has come with me from that too. So I'm yeah. conscious of the fact that if I make a print that's got some really dark imagery, imagery and skulls and things on it, or if I make t-shirts, mm -hmm. I want to print some black t-shirts for the people. Mm -hmm. There's a certain, a certain audience who, who that's, that's what they're going to want, you know? Um, and I respect that, but I'm also then kind of daring myself to push further into wanting to make more bright colored flamboyant flowery whatever the thing might be you know some something that maybe doesn't fit into that aesthetic at all and i've always been kind of afraid that that there's a there's a, there's a thing in the back of my mind sometimes when i make that kind of work that those people are just not going to be too hot on it and and actually it was i found it was proved wrong because like they when i i did a show at a roadburn festival a few years ago where i debuted at a bunch of new work and all of it was just crazy bright colors just bright purples and bright reds and pinks yeah, and yeah. golds no, no blacks in there at all just all bright bold psychedelic colors and i did it as a bit of a test and i did a few other posters at the time which were a lot darker and turned up and put them all on show there and, and brought a load of prints to sell and i was just thinking man i i really like the work but i didn't think anyone who was who was there for those bands and in that like i wasn't sure if it was the right place to do it and um, as it turned out, they loved it. They were super into it and everyone, and I, I actually sold way more of the brightly colored psychedelic uh, stuff than, than I did of any of the, the darker stuff. And that made me really happy because I realized that something I've just made up in my head, the idea that people will only want that, you know, if they're into a certain kind of music or whatever. And um, yeah, it just actually had a lot more impact. So that kind of opened the door to me then of like, oh shit, you can, you can totally, you know, Make the stuff you want to make, I suppose, is the key. You know, if you're excited about it, someone else will be, hopefully. And um, yeah, don't don't try and don't try and play to your audience because you might be wrong. Like you might be thinking you're doing what they want, but it might not even be true. You know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and 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 what about uh, Rod Barn Fest? Um, mm. How was the experience? Because I know some friends that was there, and mm. you might uh, meet them, uh, Gemma. From Monasterio. Oh yeah, she's amazing. Oh, you know, yeah, I love her. She, we we did. Um, she was so cool because I showed up and I had one uh, a print I'd done for, um, for the band J Jail. Yeah. Um, with my friend Evans' um, musical project and and uh, I had I'd made the artwork and the idea was that we were going to show up and we were going to make um, 
do some live printing at the show mm -hmm. within the art show. So uh, Gemma came, and I hadn't met Gemma before then, and we showed up, and I and I brought that piece to sort of uh, volunteer for that, and it was so cool because any idea that I had, I was I said to her, "Wouldn't it be cool if we just instead of just mixing some colors and making one print, mm -hmm. we'll make um, we'll start out with this color." And then as we're printing, we just keep adding different colors in across all, all the way along. So the color that we're printing is constantly changing. So at the end of the day, we end up having a set of 50 prints, but fundamentally every single one is different. And you could, you could go in and say, hey, I want the, the gray one at the start, or I want the pink one from the end, or the red one from the middle, yeah. or the blue one, or whatever. And then as they kind of cross blended, some of them are almost become split fountains. Mm -hmm. Um, and the cool thing was coming in with the, that idea for it and she was just like yeah great let's do it so, so enthusiastic and so down with it and, and every I, I'd be there at my booth and I'd kept coming over and checking on what she was doing and she was getting super excited just like check out the color we've just mixed for this now it's gone you know gone in a whole new direction and we ended up with a really cool set of uh, really unique prints and it was cool because as we printed them we just put them on the wall so then we just had this kind of oh. rainbow of prints and once again the print itself was this dark quite morbid looking piece with this inverted skull with animals coming out of it and candles dripping wax to the eyeballs mm -hmm. and stuff but um but it ended up being this really cool piece of print work which was just all created in the you know someone could go in and buy it and the the, the ink was barely even dry you know so yeah it was super fun and what yeah working with Gemma was uh, was a blast so i, I think I it's, it's okay. super important to to do that things like Gemma do in the festivals is um, she started doing that in Primavera Sound here in Barcelona. Uh, it's printing in life or people are walking there in the festival looking for posters or whatever, just walking and 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 see how some someone is working in screen print art. I think yeah. it's super important to understand how is the, the job and the work of a, a single poster. Uh, yeah, completely. Because because firstly, a lot of people are not going to know, even if they buy pre screen prints, firstly, there's going to be people who have no idea how a screen, the difference between, you know, how a screen print is made, the difference between that and another poster. Yeah. Um, but even those who do know, so even myself, I've, I've worked, I've never really screen printed myself, but I've, early on, I kind of worked with some screen printers to try and print my work. I am not good at it. Like it's not, it's not something my brain can really understand yeah. those sort of that sort of process. I mean, I understand it. I'm just kind of a mess with that stuff. But um, but even though I I've been having screen prints of my work made for many, many years, I don't usually get to see it be made and printed. So even to me, seeing that being next to her printing and seeing her pull the screen and lift it up, it's like wow amazing you know like that's a real thrill for me to see it even though i do understand the process so if someone's showing up there and walking past at uh, roburn or primavera who's maybe has some screen printed posters at home but it's never really thought about how they're actually made and then seeing the process is so yeah it's so so cool i love it people understand it's 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 not a simple way to to, mm. to put to push a button and and then print it's it's yeah different way so but I'm happy. I, I love screen print. I, I never screen printed, just mm -hmm. once time uh, t-shirts. But I, I never printed by myself my posters. And I think it's 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 good if you are a designer or illustrator and and make posters or or another art. If if you print that art, I think that piece it's more beautiful, you know, because it's done by just for just by you by yourself. Yeah, yeah. So I think. It's super beautiful. But, uh, it's amazing, yeah. The physicality of it as well. The fact that how, how you know everything down to how how much pressure you put on pulling yeah. the ink through is going to change the exact print because it's going to flood out a little bit more, a little bit less. Yeah. So many different factors. I, I, need, uh, makes it I really will neat. need a lot of time to do that to le to learn to print nice to sell that that copies, and yeah. I, need, I need a lot of time. So. For me, it's impossible. I prefer to to send my art to Gemma, and she's yeah, yeah, yeah. poster. So yeah, there's a, for me. I'm I I th I thought for a while about screen printing, but like I said, I'm not good at that. 
I just just working in that sort of three dimensional capacity. I I I, um, I kind of struggle with it, but I I realized very quickly it makes way more sense for me to pay people to work with people who are really good at it, who've really dedicated themselves to it, who really understand the language, who just want to make great screen prints, and then I can work on on my part and just say, okay, I'll do my part as well as I can. You do your part as well as you can, and we'll uh, come up with something really cool together. And I've always liked the idea of working closely any screen prints i've worked with i I've, i never really want to just it's not like i just send them the print files and be like okay cool see send them to me and i'll see those you know i'll see the prints in a few weeks time i like to have a, a, a dialogue and a discourse with them so i can actually maybe they can inform me of some ideas and give me mm -hmm. some ideas of how they we can make it better than what i would have imagined yeah and, yeah and, that's uh, important try some weird stuff with it maybe and just push push those boundaries a little bit further. Um, I'm in a in an interesting place with it now because I've for years I've um, I've worked with the, the way I will set up a screen print will be I make the uh, I draw I draw the pen and ink piece which is going to be the key line layer but then the, the the colors underneath are very quite simply blocked out really and as as almost always flat colors. And I'll only yeah. limit them to maybe four or five colors, and and usually I I usually like to put a gold in there too, just to add another kind of dimension to it. But um, I've always had a little bit of a frustration with it because I want to be able to kind of paint those colors in myself rather than just digitally block them in, and I have some sort of uh, physical aspect to that. And I've never quite figured out how to do it. And um, the, I have experimented in the past with kind of printing out the the key line and then putting tracing paper over it and tracing sections out and saying, okay, these are going to be the parts, but that's kind of like a, a labored version of doing the same. It's kind of the same thing really as if I just did it on Photoshop. So there's not really that much point in that, but, but in, I just did a new piece, um, a Jimi Hendrix poster that I put out last week. And mm -hmm. with that one, I've done a completely different method where I've actually hand colored all of the colors in it. And, um, I, we still, the, the poster hasn't been printed yet and I've got to figure out the best way that we're going to achieve printing that poster. And there are many, many ways we could do it because at the moment, all of the colors are many, many screens that I've painted by hand as using inks and watercolor paper and then scanning them in and comping them all together. So um, yeah. that's feels like I've just, just stepped into a new territory of, of a new method of working, but also it's going to be a. It's a really interesting challenge, and in how do we how do we screen print that? You know, because it's got yeah. uh, tons of different colors going on in it, tons of different shades and tones and layers and things like that. And so it's quite exciting. Yeah, it's a new, new uh, a new challenge and a new method, fundamentally. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, I I just want to to show that poster from Jimi Hendrix. And mm. I'm trying to do it. Just give me a second, because I will, oh. I will try to to share my my screen during this conversation, because I right. have something to to show to the people. So we are so beauty, and it's good to see us for the people. But <laughs> I think maybe if we can uh, make some inputs from from Instagram or or, or whatever, uh, cool. maybe it will yeah. be better. My, than my face, you know, I look pretty, pretty, but, but <laughs> I, I'm for, I'm 40. How are you? How old am I? Yeah. 42. 42. Okay. Yeah. You're older than me. Born in 79, which I'm, <laughs> I'm always very happy to say I was born in the 70s because it sounds cool, but, um, sounds super cool. Pretty old. I, I, I must say I, I'm from the eighties. I prefer it the seventies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's fine. I'm from the 81. I am fine. Um, that's not a stupid question, you know. It this is must a conversation, and I, <laughs> I, I want to I want to share my. Okay, let's do it because okay, I, I, I'm bought a new computer weeks ago, and I think this is the first or second time I'm using Zoom right. in this computer. So I must to to. Um, to let uh, that computer uh, permissions to 
to open. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. fucking shit. It's, up. it's April, you know? <laughs> Fuck them. So I must to check this. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, ah, I can do it. Okay, I can do it because I am, this is open. Okay. Fuck. Okay. Doesn't matter. Don't worry. Um, so if everyone wants to, to see this, this poster from Jimi Hendrix, uh, can go to, to your Instagram and they will see. There's a lot of colors here. How many colors yeah. you say it? I, well, I don't, this is the thing. I don't know yet how in, we're going to print in it. In screen print, in screen print. There's, there's a few ways we could do it because I, so what I did was I drew the key line and then yeah. I, I'm going to share some of this on my Instagram over the next couple of weeks because it's like a, it's a really different method. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, I can probably show you right here if I can remember where I put them. Oh, there it is. Oh, ah, ah. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it, man. <laughs> I can do it. I'm sorry, but I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay, I, I hope this is recording, but I don't know. <laughs> okay, but that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, that should be. So yeah, you can see there's a ton of colors going on in there and um, and some gold as well. But so the key line, I can show, I'll show you the... Uh... Okay. So if I, so this is the... This is the key line. Okay. The illustration. So that's all drawn as one piece. And then I also drew all of the, I've got piles of drawings of like the, all of the text behind him. I drew it over and over so many times that I, I kind of sat down at the, um, I sat down at the computer and started looking through different fonts and typefaces and manipulating them and playing with them. and. Um, my partner Johanna came down into the studio and looked at what I was doing and she's she's just had a moment and said to me she, like because I was I was kind of frustrated with it wasn't really figuring out what to do and she said why don't you just sit at your desk and just start drawing the text you know because all it, of course so many of old posts you look at old Victor Moscoso posters that whole era it would always be hand-drawn text anyway and I, I just got carried away with thinking that it would be um, that I'd use some sort of typeface for it. But uh, yeah, she, she sent me on a really good path because she just suggested, hey, why don't you sit at your desk to start drawing it and just keep drawing it and see where it takes you. And and I what I did was just took, um, I started off with paper, but then took a pile of tracing paper. And then each time I just slam a new piece of tracing paper over the top, trace it again, trace it again, just refine it and refine it. And each time I traced it, it would get better, hopefully, <laughs> get better than the last one until eventually I got to a point where it felt like it worked. And that was, so that was the writing that I had behind him. So I went from having this, this mm -hmm. key line, and then I printed, I printed the key line and then painted um, colors. So I printed a really, really faint version of the key line so I could just about see see it and then I painted it many times for all the different all the different sections. Wow. Um so I did loads of them and they're like all like slightly so they're all different different areas of the of the painting. Mm -hmm. And then this one's just like an undercoat version of it. So it's just like really wow. faint. Too many layers. Too many layers. Yeah. So so I painted so I, yeah, so ultimately all the colors are painted and then I scanned in every single one of those, lined them all up together, slammed them all into one image. I mean, they're all separate layers, but they're all, there are so many different colors in there. So, yeah. which is kind of cool because it's almost like I've got like, this is this, you know, this is the screen print is all of these things together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I, that fine, it kind of it finally made me really happy because I think for years I've been trying to figure out how can I, make how can it all be illustrated i want to be making doing the line work and doing the colors and painting the colors by hand and seeing that happen not just being like bang hit hit a color and it'll you know in future yeah easy but now it needs the thing is now um we got to figure out how to screen print it so mm -hmm. uh, there's many ways you could do it we could we could take each layer refine the color to be one so that each 
I don't know, break it up into single colors or do a sort of CMYK. But this isn't, it's not for me to figure out, it's whoever's screen printing can figure it out. But, um, but yeah, the, the, it's, it's exciting for me because if, if we can figure out a good way to screen print that and I can then continue to work in that method, it feels, it feels a lot more authentic and real to me and it feels like something I've been trying to figure out for years, you know, about how I might yeah. be able to find yeah. the color that Yeah, doing. of course. But, but it's, it's a very long process since you start the, um, the idea of that poster uh, mm. to, to the finish, because it's, um, you must think about the composition, start a drawing, then inking, and then try every layer, every color. So it, it's, it's it super really, long. It, it is a really, it's a really long process. And I think I kind of forget about how much it is. And there's some, thinking back to when I started it, when when I was asked to do it, they I need to I need to have permission to use any photos that I reference in the portrait. I need to I can only use the photos that they provide, which is is incredible a very strict thing. And then they'll um, grant me license to use whichever whichever um, photos I ask. So uh, they said, as in they sent me a sheet of photos, contact sheet of photos that were made um, that were taken at Monterey. By a specific photographer and then I could pick out the ones that I was interested in using and then they'd get permission to use those and so even that part of the process is you know, you're making decisions straight away about what you know what you're going to use for reference mm -hmm. so it's not like I can just use any Jimi Hendrix just because I'm doing it for, for the official Hendrix estate I still there's still a lot of rules about licensing an image and it's super super strict so I found this one that the image that I picked was I had a choice of using one image where everything is perfectly um, clear and crisp and it's a really clear photo, but he's very still. Or there was another photo, which I wanted to use and I did use where he's just moving, swinging yeah. his car, but the whole photo is really blurred. And it's an old <laughs> black and white photo and you can, you, his teeth are kind of almost doubled up where it's almost like a blurring double exposure type thing. But every time I look through the contact sheet of the little thumbnails, I just knew that was the one. And I was like, I know that one's gonna be so much harder to draw, but that one feels exciting to me and it's there's movement in it. And yeah, that's why I've always strived for with, with posters I've made and illustrations, I always want movement in them. I want them to look like a little like a snapshot of a moment, you know, not just not just a still yeah. static, still life, you know. So so I I made it difficult for myself because I picked a photo that was really blurred. And I, yeah. I, honestly, up until the moment I came to draw it, I didn't know if it, if it would work at all. Like I, I had this very blurry image and I had to, usually I like using really bold, clear lines where you can at least refine an outline to it. And you know, mm -hmm. there's some solid binary rule of like of black and white in there. But with this, all the features are just blurred out. So I had to just get in and just stipple it and try and hope that it was going to work out. And I'm looking at the original image and thinking, well, it should work if I, if I, even though it, it's a very strange image because his mouth is really blurred out and his face is kind of contorted, the photo looks cool. So if I can replicate that close enough and then everything else, all of his, his medallion and his shirt. And it, I mean, there's so much, Hendrix is the perfect person for me to draw. Yes. Cause he's already, I like to put sit, I like to put gold and feathers and you know, uh, flamboyantly oh, yeah. materials and things. And he's got all of that going on. He's got feather boa, or it's all there. Yeah. You know, he's got a big gold metal medallion, feather boa, beautiful orange shirt with these um, yeah. various um, sort of frilly layers on it. So yeah. much cool shit going on. So it was, yeah, the perfect person to draw. But actually, in the in the in the photo where it's all blurred, you can't really see what's going on. You know, it's just a weird blur of folds and creases. So I just made it all up. You know, for a lot of it, I kind of just figured out. I had this idea of what would um, my my starting point for it, my kind of um, manifesto of what I wanted to achieve was just to think, imagine you'd gone to that show at Monterey where he was playing and he famously, you know, it was his big US debut and he set his guitar on fire and was playing with his teeth and doing all this cool shit. All these things that became legendary. That show was only, he played for like half an hour. It was like, a really really short set but it was yeah. the most significant important thing he ever did and i was imagining what if you 
What if someone who went to that show and saw it happen and saw that spectacle then came to me and told me about it and described it, what would I draw, you know? So it was like, rather than trying to make it perfect, real, just be like, what would it feel like if you saw that? If you came home that, imagine you came home that night and you're like, oh man, I remember he had this crazy giant medallion. It was this big on his chest. And his, I think his guitar was on fire. I think he was still playing it when it was on fire. I can't really remember, but I know fire, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, all of these things and just being like, just imagining him as this crazy otherworldly being who's just come down and presented this insane spectacle to people. Cause that's what you want. I mean, that's like for a gig poster, surely that's, that's what it should be. You know, like the, the experience of going to a show is, you know, sometimes disappointing if you go back and see, it's like the argument of not, you know, don't use, don't video stuff on your phone if you're at a show. Cause if you go back and watch it, it's, it's never going to be anything like being at the show and seeing no. it. So, of course. Better just not do it. And if you come home with the memories of it, you'll always be like, holy shit, that show was so crazy. Yeah. I wish I'd found it. But <laughs> and, and yeah. just close your eyes. Just close your eyes and feel and feel what yeah what they are playing. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I understand. That's good. Um, I must to say, I must to say something, because um I think I don't know it, because I, I I was invited here like you as i say uh, mm -hmm. i think these um talks uh made uh cause the the pandemic you know the the, the covid and and that, mm. that, that shit and and moments festival wants to to put the first question is um who was uh last year for for artists like you or me, yeah, or yeah, bands or whatever, or whatever. We you you told us by email, but I think we must to to talk a little bit uh, about last year because was yeah yeah super bad for music industry, I think. Mm. So how 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 did you live uh, last I, year? Honestly, I didn't find it so bad because yeah. I think for a few, for a few reasons that, um, I mean, it definitely changed. It changed my plans a lot because I originally a year ago or before, before the lockdown began, I was actually planning to do a big tour, um, with, with Johanna, my partner, she was about to do, we were going to go on tour together. She was living in LA and I was living over here and I was going to leave uh leave my house for good and just <laughs> is now when i think about it it sounds crazy but i was going to leave my house leave my studio we were going to i bought a van and we were going to do a tour all over europe doing and i was going to do post art shows at all these different venues and she was going to play music mm -hmm. there and um we had stuff booked from throughout all across europe and then in the states stuff we we're gonna do stuff in australia stuff in yeah. canada all sorts of shit like that we were lining up to do and and we were going to just be on the road for the whole year so then uh, um i managed to hang on keep keep my house and stay here and kind yeah. of what, as soon as I real as soon as I realized, okay, you're not going to be do doing the thing you thought you were going to be doing. You're not going to be touring, and you're going to be back here. I sort of reworked my whole studio setup because I I'd gone into a place where I had I was doing all shipping of artwork from here and fulfillment for for print work, and that was just like that was one thing I wanted to get away from. I, and I realized if I'm going to be here, I just want it to be. A, an art studio just a functioning space where I can just make artwork and so it, yeah it kind of lit a fire in me to just reinvent the way I was working here so I mm -hmm. overhauled the whole studio outsourced all of the shipping to other people set up put some stuff in place then to start doing things like I, I started doing the uh, t-shirts and apparel with Death Wish I saw yeah which I hadn't done before and hadn't thought about doing and thought okay let's just really overnight just came up with a whole different scheme of like I'm gonna have other people sh sh selling my work in the past I was always very much wanted to keep all under one roof and just be like any any work that I sell comes from here and I pack it myself ship it myself 
but that had become such a huge task. And um, so I went complete 180 with it and decided I'll outsource it. To, I'll have prints being sold from the UK, some from the US, apparel being sold from the different territories. Um, so, and that felt really good. And I, I very just overnight kind of changed my, changed my outlook on it and how I was gonna, um, yeah, work as an artist. And um, in terms of the jobs, it was kind of a, uh, there were definitely a few things that got postponed um, mm -hmm. or, ca or canceled, but they were probably a blessing to me because I think I would notoriously take on too many jobs anyway. And I, and I under, underestimate how long it takes me to do work. And so having a few of them fall away and not have to do them and only have maybe two or three really big jobs to do um, was kind of cool because it gave me a bit of breathing space to be able to get my, get my studio sorted and get things in check and change my business up a little bit and, and mm -hmm. plan different ways of working. So yeah, I, I, for, for me, it was, it, it's been pretty cool. And, and I was nervous about the idea that at this point, then I'd be relying on selling t-shirts and selling apparel yeah. and things like that rather than the jobs. But, but really I've always relied on the print because, because I take so long, like my, the, the kind of work I make is so time consuming. I can't really rely on the commission fee to pay my bills. Like I don't really think about that. Even being my income, it's very much about print sales and merch sales, things like that. So um, yeah. all of that was still in place. And when I, and, and I, I was a bit nervous about putting new prints out and putting new t-shirts and things out, but they actually sold pretty well. Cause I wasn't sure if people would, I know everyone money was tight for everyone and maybe people wouldn't be, treating themselves to those things. But the other side of that was a lot of people were sitting at home thinking, hey, <laughs> what am I going, you know, I'm not good. A lot of people sitting at home and they're not going out spending money drinking and partying and whatever other things they spend the money on. So maybe they were sitting at home thinking, hey, I'll treat myself to a sweet well, t-shirt well, or print well, from my wallet. I, 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 I was drinking a lot in my small apartment. Yeah. <laughs> in the, uh, the first days of the um, lockdown yeah I, i said okay i'm living alone i i living i was living in a very small flat only uh, 20 meters of mm. flat so super small flat because yeah. i was i was changed I, i was moved from barcelona to to this town and and now i'm living in another place but another flat but when when just the lockdown started i was living in a 20 meters only flat. Mm. Uh, fuck for me it was a fucking chaos in my mind because it's very small place. Um, all stop it. I I can't I can't go to outside. I so I only have windows. It was super hard to me. So I <laughs> I was drinking almost every day for the first month. Oh man, we drank so much wine the first. Yeah, yeah no, no, I, I only was. I only drank, drank drink wine at that time. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. bought so a lot of bottles and okay, now today, Monday, today, okay, let, let, let's work with wine, of course, every yeah. day. I'm drinking wine right now. I mean, I do drink wine. <laughs> I do drink right. a lot of wine, but I'm I do. Drinking, I, 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 I'm drinking beer. I I drink. I do. <laughs> I do drink when I uh, when I work a lot of the time, but it's usually okay. like a, a pace of doing certain kind of work in the day and then it, especially if it's if i'm drawing like into the evening yeah. get a nice vibe going on get some good music going or or a podcast or something but mm -hmm. or put some records on but burn some incense you know have some beer and i yeah i always like to drink, drink beer or wine when i'm working as long as it's not too much and i get a bit wobbly and you know no no of course right, gotta, gotta keep that in check but um I, I, sometimes I i'll kind of stay up really late and and just be <laughs> working away on something and then early hours in the morning finally go to bed and then the next day you wake up and you're like shit what did i make what did i draw you know you woke and up and, and, look at it and maybe it's sometimes horrified but hopefully you not woke up, you woke up and say oh i love my job <laughs> yeah, yeah or <laughs> no damn, um, I, <laughs> I, i really enjoy when, when when i can when i can work drinking wine Or, mm. or a good beer, good craft beer, not um, during all the day, because I yeah. work 
I'm doing like an office um, uh, or office time. How is it in English? The office mm. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but sometimes I must to work by night if I have something to do, it's urgent, or if I need more concentration, I prefer to, to work by night. Mm. It's perfect to me because phone, it's just not working. People, they are yeah, not writing exactly. emails. So for me, it's more peaceful. And mm. that's the, the, the best moment to me to drink a, a glass of wine. And just, I, I think I work better. You know, it's yeah. Uh, there, there is something in it. There's, there's something, um, even though it sounds like it might be a little reckless to to drink when you're working, but there's something very specific about it, especially with wine. That if if I set that up and I set the drawing up ready to go and I put some music on, mm -hmm. if I something about drinking drinking wine with it really focuses your your mind on that moment and that like I, I can easily then put my phone in another room. I won't even yeah. think to look at it. I won't check any emails. I won't, no, nothing's going to distract me if I've got that little, that vibe set up ready to go. And I've got, got my wine, got my incense, got my music. Yeah. yeah it's, 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 I think of it just being part of a, a ritual really of just ha having your own ritual of setting up a good space to work in. And, yeah. but it's actually, even though you, you might think that uh, drinking wine and working is going to make you, uh, sloppy or confused or whatever but it's actually about focus like it's something to do with putting that ritual in place setting up things just as they're supposed to be and i really find then i can lock into just being in that zone and yeah it's, yeah, it's definitely the most effective way to work for me yeah and i I, I used to work all exactly what you described i used to always love working in the night i still do it's a it's a, it's a kind of a battle because i want to be like right now it's beautiful outside mm. it's sunny and yeah glorious clear sky and all the sheep are making a racket out there but um it's really lovely out there and i want to be awake in the daytime but in the past i always would work in the night just i i did start about six or seven o'clock start working and i'd work basically yeah. until if i if i had a good vibe going on a piece i wouldn't stop i just work right through the night and until I hit a point where either I'm kind of slowing down or getting a bit just too tired to work but but if the vibe is good and if it's happening and it's working I'm just like well I don't know if this is going to work tomorrow so I'm just going to keep at it and do as much yeah. as I possibly yeah. can and uh there's something cool about that and you can get into a bit of a weird hypnotic kind of zone with it and and yeah definitely then I'll kind of get up the next day and look at the piece and be like oh my god I can't even remember drawing a lot of that I definitely found that yeah I think looking at that Hendrix piece now there's a lot of it I feel like I can't remember drawing it it's really weird get such a strange mindset on it it's weird yeah yeah um, for me it's, it's so hard to work by night now because uh, I have a lot of jobs from from brands brands or companies uh, maybe festivals and they are working by day mm. so you must to be there for them so right, it's hard yeah. to me because sometimes if i work by night i want to sleep in the morning i need to yeah, sleep. Yeah. If, if not I, I can work but i can't because phone is is just sounding sound um mm. people are just writing me hey hey wake up i need and you know <laughs> yeah. so fuck but I need some some space to create uh, and night for me it's it's perfect. It's the same for music. I prefer to play by night than yeah. during the day. So about I'm sorry because about um the the locking and, and pandemia and whatever. Uh you you said you had some changes. Um yeah me too because I was uh I'm playing in a band and mm. we was to we we was planning to release the album last year, so we must to stop it. So mm. a lot of bands stop their releases. And so uh, shows stop it, live shows, live tour stop it. So there is no posters to do. Mm. And 
I work a lot for a, for a brewer, beer, craft beer company, making the, the labels and they stop it selling. Beer. Yeah, they took a hit too. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, I guess I was lucky. I guess I was lucky that I was working on uh, like a gig that happened in 1969 or when was it 67, 69. Um, yeah, like working on not not working on shows that were happening this year. But yeah, that's the thing. If you're working on that, definitely did happen. There were a few gig posters that got postponed because they were not happening. But hopefully, will happen at some point. Um, yeah, it's a real tough one. So yeah, so many things are suddenly put to a stop. Did you so? Did you find things to replace those jobs with? Uh, so active. Or? Uh, yeah, maybe I I had just a uh, few few works to do for bands, just some t-shirt, some t-shirt and and something more. But that it's not the only uh, way to pay my bills. So I need more. I I was need more. So I was working hard uh, with my online store. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm selling every month a lot. So. I'm happy with that, but of course it's not um, uh, it's not sufficient to to pay the bills. So I was yeah. working super hard, making some new posters, art prints, or whatever to sell. And there is a a, a good thing is the people uh, um, buy a lot. People just spend a lot of uh, time. Uh, checking online store from artists or or yeah. people, a small a small buyers, and and they ordered a lot of things and 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 they was happy to to wait until you can ship them, you know. So yeah, that's so cool. That's super awesome. So <laughs> okay, I'm faith to the humanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I I survived by online store. Because we was uh, two guys working in the studio, so mm. uh, we was only living from from the online store. So it's so hard because there are two pe two different people paying their their own bills. So yeah, yeah I'm wow. happy. I'm super grateful to to the people that that, that support us. So I think we must to say thanks to internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that that's fantastic, and I think that we're definitely in a. There's a cool thing. I think um, during the lockdown, definitely that there was there was an interesting moment. I think of people taking paying more attention to those things that are being handcrafted and handmade, and mm -hmm. individual people selling their own things. Where um, actually worked in a really cool way to shine a bit more of a light on those and people appreciate them that bit more and realize that um you can have that direct connection of buying something from direct from an artist and i think that's probably was a a pretty cool kind of empowering moment for yourself as well for you to to recognize oh hey actually you you don't have to always rely on having to on making a t-shirt for a band who's 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 known in their own to sell it in their own right you can actually sell your own work yourself yeah. online as well to, to people directly it's really yeah. cool it's so thankful yeah i i i remember um one week before one week before the the lockdown here was on um, march uh 12 mm. 12 or 4 4 14 i can remember but yeah uh i was working in, with metallica Mm. Uh, with 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 uh, two artwork for a t-shirt, and when lockdown starts, they they just stopping me. Uh, they just stopping uh, email me. So, yeah, ah, all 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 music, all bands, all com music companies are stopped. Really, yeah. big bands and small bands. So, fuck, they br they broke my my mind. You know, so mm. fuck. This is the end, right? But yeah, we are here and we are working hard again, so that's fine. We are for that. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad. You, I'm <laughs> so glad you got through it. Yeah, I don't really. I think, I think with it's weird. Like I, I don't know how I managed 
I, th I think it's because with the, the way that I work, I work on, I don't really do that many projects in a year because I kind of tend to take so much time on them. So I only need a few to kind of, the, the cycle is very, very slow. So somehow, mm -hmm. for me, even if I'm taking a year away from that, I'm working in this really, really kind of slower drawn out cycle of work. So somehow, somehow it kind of lined up okay for me. But, um, and yeah, and I'm kind of glad it gave me the space to get a few new things in place and, and focus some attention on just making some, yeah, making some art for myself and changing up my methods a little bit, which might not, wouldn't have happened otherwise, because I would have just been on that train of just continually yeah. churning things out. So it was yeah, a nice little time of reflection and realigning some things. And yeah, I'm actually really happy with where I am now and the way things are running in the studio. And yeah. I, I I really, I really, this, this, this will sound so bad, but uh, I really need to stop a little bit. The wall, the wall, yeah, the wall. Yeah. I, I just really need that. Um, in, in first, in first way, because um, I don't know if you saw it here in the big city. It's, it's so easy to, to see that uh, the first week a lot of uh, animals animals was walking the streets mm. yeah so it was fucking really cool yeah and and we just stop it all wall and we just help the planet yeah so i was thinking this is will be um, a good thing to do in the future if we, if our humanity or humans think the uh, same yeah yeah just stop stop uh, every week just one day you know yeah, like, yeah. stop the right. car stop working stop everything you are doing yeah because i think the thing that the thing that happened with a lot of that and and with what you're describing is that people think that if they stop going to work or i i mean obviously everyone, everyone needs their income so but certain actions that you do whether it's religiously going to the shop every day to buy certain things or going to work to do certain things yeah, or yeah. All, all these actions that we do that we think are so important and then when we were told to stop doing them everyone mm. thought it was going to be this huge disaster and a lot of people found like oh shit actually everything's just fine if i don't do all of these things that i'm convinced yeah. i have you know, i'm told that i have to do all the time and maybe things are a lot better and i really hope that through all of that people have recognized that yeah, what, what is actually valuable to them? What are the important actions to be doing and which things actually don't need their attention or don't more so which things don't need their anxieties and their worries and all of that, you know, and take some of that away. I think the so world... it's, it's been an amazing, bizarre experiment and yeah. hopefully very enlightening to people as well, you know, to, to realize what's, what's the important stuff and to also have a, yeah, to kind of have a bit more of their own voice of realizing like, oh shit, we don't actually have to comply with going along with this big churning machine. You know, you can actually just step out of it and it's it's not the end of the world. Like things are not going to fall to pieces. You can actually, you have a lot more, you know, control over your own shit than you might realize. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the worst thing I think is for the people it was, oh fuck, I must to live with me. I must to understand who I am or yeah, who I yeah. have near me uh, in the sofa or, or living on my bed. You know, it's, yeah. it's now it's the time to to know uh, to now understand you yourself, yeah. uh, the guy yeah. in front of you. Um, for me, I, I was for me it was a good experience. It was a bad experience, but but um, finally it was. Uh, starting a good way to think about a lot of things I I had to pass and and was a good good way to think everything I I was need to 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 look for a, to find a solution in my life not only about job it's in my whole life so for me it was super fine to <laughs> the lockdown yeah um, to stop and I remember um, seven years ago, I was at home one day, and 
and just wake up. And that day I was want to go to rehearsal room with a band I had. Um, and I stopped it in the middle of the way because I had an agoraphobia. Mm. An agoraphobia, agoraphobia, agoraphobia is it's, it's, it's in English, agoraphobia. It's it, the fear I had to go to the street. So yeah. I'm a very social person. I'm always go to a show. I'm always uh, are with a lot of people. So for me, social, it's super important. Mm. But one day I don't, I didn't understand why I stop it. My mind just say, wow. no, no, you must to, to close to your home. And I close it for a lot of months inside a, inside a flat and it was fucking insane. Mm. I, I couldn't work. Uh, I couldn't look people, play with my bands, go to the shows. So this lockdown, I think, was the same for a lot of people. So that, was so not that, a phobia, that, but that that experience happened to you before the before the lockdown and not related to the lockdown. No, super yeah. before seven years yeah. ago. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it, it, and it started one day, so it's. And is a fear of is it related more to the open to spaces and so, or or the people or all of it. Like I don't know, because it was start uh, like when I opened the door, yeah. just that moment that I opened the door and just walk my first walk uh, to the street, yeah. uh, I have the feeling to need to peace. Mm. You know, it's fuck. Yeah, I, yeah. Need, I, need, I need to peace. So wow. I'm, I, I, I close the door and go to my, go to my home. And and then I was trying to to peace, but mm. it doesn't work. It's yeah. super hard. It's it's super hot. It's like an infection. Mm. They told me the doctors, but I, I I didn't have an infection. So I was trying to because doctors and medicine doesn't work. So I I, I was trying natural uh, medicine and and just therapy. And, and now I'm fine, of course, I'm fine. Sometimes I had something, but now I'm fine. But that moment was super, super important in my life because I was think I will never go to to shows, to go people, to meet people, to drink a yeah. beer with my friends. For me, the life stopped and it was super dark times. I was mm. I was playing the the guitar at my home I, I create a, a music project, a solo project. I will send you if yeah. you want to listen with a classical yeah. guitar. And a lot of people, when I'm playing, playing these songs now in life, um, people from the crowd I never met told me, fuck, this is uh, super dark, but I have, I have seen, a, I saw a light in that music. <laughs> and, and they are talking to me uh, a few histories stories of, of his life like uh, I lost a children and then I was a music teacher music thera music therapy teacher so a lot of people uh, search uh, an auto therapy with music for me was fine works super fine and and and, and, and save it my life I think so what I mean th this lockdown, for a lot of people, was the same. Mm. Uh, there is something that are saying to you: don't go outside in the in the big cities, because maybe where you are living is not the same. Because mm. you are hills or mountains or forest, I think you can go there during the lockdown, right? Yeah. So it's not the same. You can you can't go to the city, but okay, you can work. So that's that's super important. Mm. that's it <laughs> sorry <laughs> I had my moment of yeah sorry and yeah, I that's amazing. What, 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 a, what a crazy experience but what a, yeah. do you feel do you feel now that that was a blessing for you to have that to to have to sort of figure out who you were or or the, the most it sounds sounds like a huge shift in your life to to have to spend that time by yourself and 
in your own in your own lockdown, you know? If, yeah, and if if I if I if I remember when I was with agoraphobia, the first time uh, I, I I just go out to my home was to play uh, in my very old first band. Mm. We we had a reunion show because singer dies, and we we wa we wanted to do. Um, a, a small festival with all his bands, a lot mm -hmm. of bands, and and just the drummer and me was played the song, and I was fucking sh uh, tired at my home, but I say I must to play it, I must right. to play for my friend, and I I remember I take the guitar, um, I go to the band, with the band with the car, and. And then I was fucking tight in the in the band. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I need to piece, I need to piece. Mm -hmm. But since I stop it in the venue and just see a lot of friends, I forgot it. And I was fucking yeah. fine. Yeah. Fucking Amazing. fine all night. Really. So after that, one month after, uh, I was touring with my another band. I we, we had a European tour and I said, okay, I will go. I take the guitar, I, I take the pedals and take the van and go 15 years around Europe. Okay, <laughs> take me. And was fucking every, I was pre, uh, fucking fine. So that's yeah. that's how I, I'm cured, I'm cured, cured? I don't know. I'm fine after that. So Amazing. Music saved me. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What <laughs> I was the, to... Sorry. What was the um? What was the name of the band that you toured around Europe with, or you played in many bands? When, when the band I I create during the agoraphobia, the agoraphobia, or or the band I was touring. Uh, the one that you toured with that got you out of it afterwards. Oh, so, uh, uh, so the the band I was. On tour for first time after the God of yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was playing in Siberia, Siberia, like like mm -hmm. Russian um, country. Yeah, Siberia was an instrumental band. They are play. They are still playing. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, we we just just go to to Belgium or Germany. I can remember, but was insane. Was insane. Amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now I'm playing in a band. It's it's a doom. Instrumental Doom Sludge Band. I, I will give you, I think I have. Yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to hear. <laughs> well, I will give you, I, I will send you uh, my email. Um, I have maybe the last question because we have a good a good chat, one year talking, I think it's, it's okay. But I have a last question during about um, lockdown. I think you, you start a project in Instagram, in Instagram uh, about the exploding a school. Oh yeah. You start yeah, yeah, draw yeah. you start drawing on a school and then you say if everyone wants to to take that and just finish. Yeah, that it's been crazy that whole thing because I, I the original I'll tell you the the original reason I ever mm -hmm. made that skull, well actually if I trace it right back, so the, the, the reason I first made it was because um, I was working on a, a Grateful Dead poster okay. and I drew that Grateful Dead logo, which I'd always loved my whole life. I always thought it was cool, even when I didn't know what it was. You know, I pr probably saw it as a kid and was like, I don't know what that is, but that's a fucking cool logo, you know. And then years yeah. later, got to work on a Grateful Dead poster. So I was like, cool, I get to draw this logo. Mm -hmm. So I drew kind of my own version of, of it. The skull was kind of my own weird. I guess a little bit more realistic than what you'd see on the original logo. And I drew that on the poster and that is a real small little gold version of it, the the poster. And um, after that, I, it, I couldn't get it out of my head. Like I wanted to redraw it and try some different things with it. So I drawn it, drawn it a few times and I started doing, um, uh, I, did a, I did a series of them, but I'd keep the skull the same. And the reason for it was because when I would go to um, do uh, poster conventions like MondoCon was the, the big one I do every year in Austin and a few others, um, often people come up to your uh, 
your booth when you're working, they ask mm. you to, they, they'll ask for a, a drawing in their sketchbooks. And because yeah. of the way yeah. I draw it, I, I don't really, I never know what to do. Cause I'm like, well, I'm going to draw something, but it's going to take me so long that if for it to look like my drawing is going to take me a certain amount of time. And I don't really want to draw something real shit for you. And I, I want it to be good. I stole a, so I stole this idea from um, a friend of mine. This, do you know the artist Daniel Danger? Uh, uh, no. Incredible artist who he draws a lot of, um, he's, he's known, he's made all sorts of like gig posters, movie posters and, and, and poster art for years. But um, he, he's known for, he draws a lot of kind of collapsing, dilapidated old American buildings. So okay. these old houses, they're all falling to pieces. That's kind of like his mostly well-known thing. And he gave me this little trick where he said, when he's in that same position at an art show and a kid comes up and says, oh, can you, can you draw in my sketchbook? He has a rubber stamp, which has half of a building on it and he'll stamp it and then he'll finish oh. it. So each one is different, but... So everyone gets an original illustration that's like slightly different, but based, but, but and they're totally happy with it. They, can, they know the process, they've seen it happen. But for him, he only has to draw for two minutes to finish this piece. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's happy. So, cause I felt like I kept telling people I wouldn't draw in their sketchbooks and they'd be upset and whatever. So, so I said, to, he told me this and I was like, can I steal this idea from you? And he was like, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I made a rubber stamp with a skull on it. So then, if someone came for a sketch, I would stamp the skull in their book and then finish the skull and just draw okay. something up and it would be right. a super quick thing, but it would look like a fully realized illustration. Mm -hmm. you know, it would look decent enough anyway, they'd be happy with it. So, wow. so it came from that. So after I'd done the conventions, I came home and I had this rubber stamp still and I started just making different versions of them. So I'd stamp it and then just make a little miniature version. Um, so it kind of stems from there, just having this, uh, uh, th this starting point where you would have never drawn the thing otherwise but because you've got half of it is kind of done for you it just pushes you into to making something you wouldn't have imagined making before and um i i wanted i think because i could see dur during the early early days of lockdown there were a lot of people just stuck at home just with all of this uh, pent-up energy that they wanted to use and I could just see this opportunity there for tr trying to think, okay, how can I throw something out into the world that's going to maybe inspire some people to make some artwork and make it collaborative. And, and that one was just the most super obvious way to do it. So yeah, so I basically just put that same image of half the skull, just put it as like a PDF on the Dropbox or whatever online. So anyone could just go and just download it, post up a really simple bit of text just saying, you know, this is for like anyone at all can do it, that you don't have to be an artist, you don't have to be everyone. a professional artist or anything, you can just, any ability, whatever you want to do. And the cool thing was that firstly, I had, I had an amazing response from it, like so much work was created and, um, but stuff that I would have never dreamt of, like somewhat people were making um, embroidered tapestries and yeah, yeah. Uh, cutting things out of paper and, and um, yeah. making, cakes and cookies and um sugar art and then and sculptures and animations and um yeah. just so many different styles of working that i would have art. It's art. taken it a lot crazy of different. many of of type of art you know so why illustration only no no I yeah what what do you think you wanna do? okay embroidered embroidered yeah, yeah. And that, that was cool seeing people yeah. taking it beyond just being a pen and ink illustration into completely different realms of um, yeah. different mediums, different ways of making art, but then, and some of them were animated videos. Uh, someone made a song, you know, like all sorts of, all sorts of things. But the, the coolest part really was that a lot of people who posted up the artwork would write about it. And a lot of them said that they maybe hadn't drawn for years, you know, like they, they'd always liked drawing, but they didn't have a reason to draw, you know? So, um, or, or they can, a lot of people just don't, they need that little push, you know, to get them into it. And yeah. this was what that was for them, for a lot of people. So I, I just saw this consistently, uh, the same kind of story come up where someone would say, I've always really loved drawing, but this just gave me a reason to do it. And it was, and, and then the skull part of it doesn't matter anymore. It's just that they're drawing this new thing they wouldn't have made and coming up with some cool stuff, which is, it, it kind of opens them up to, um, mm -hmm. you know, 
just use their imagination and make something that's really honest and real. And because half of it's already done, they're kind of like, hey, whatever I draw now, it's going to still feel like a completed piece. And I think it's that it's a cool way for anyone to work, really, just to have that, um, um, just that freedom of not worrying about, not worrying too much about what the end result's going to be. Because it's like, hey, it's half done already. I'm just going to finish this thing. And, you know, whatever you do, it's going to be like, it's got a skull in it, so it's going to be cool, you know. Half <laughs> 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 done, but um, but yeah, so, so many of them were so cool. And right now, I'm trying to. I, I hinted this idea at the start, but now I'm really want to make it happen. Is to make a book of all of the as okay. many as fit into it. Basically, just a big. I, I had a just got a vision of making just a big coffee table art book. Mm -hmm. of, because we had like thousands of, of people made artwork for it. So I want to try and fit as many as I can into a book and get that published. Okay. Just a huge, thick stack of cool, you know, illustrations and posters and uh, photographs and then sequences. If it's like an animated piece, we'll have all of the yeah. images in there. And if it's a three dimensional thing, we'll maybe show it from all different angles and just have just really show the variation of, of what was made. And there was some cool, there was some really cool ones where it was like little kids who were like five years old, seven years old, painting these cool, <laughs> painting some yeah, cool, yeah. cool shit, it, like get them in the book, you know, just uh, all these different age groups and all over the world. So yeah, if I do it, I, I'm, I've been working on a sort of pitch for the book for uh, the last um, couple of months actually. And, um, I'm going to be sort of pitching it to some publishers pretty soon. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, um, yeah, I'll get it made somehow. But if I do, then I want to have it be, I don't feel the, the idea of me selling a book, which is going to be almost none of my artwork is going to be everyone yeah. else's artwork is, yeah. is kind of weird. So I, if, if we're selling the book, I, a hundred percent of it will go to, um, charities for yep, like nice. probably I want it to be kind of something that combines like a mental health charity with a sort of mm -hmm. nature charity nice. something to do with mental health and nature or the two things combined so I've, I've got a few options on the table so so if we do it we will do it okay. when we do it maybe you can yeah. split the value be, yeah I want to make it yeah just this big big art book and we'll um sell it and it'll, all the money will go to charity and just hopefully everyone will just contribute the work and that's super beautiful because yeah. I was thinking when you you did this in Instagram, um, maybe you didn't think about it like this, but but you you make um, you oh, you give a very good time to people because they forgot for a moment the times we are li we was living in last year. Yeah. So I think that is the the good thing of this project to do it that moment because people just forgot sure. it. Yeah. Okay, I want to draw. It's something beautiful, and that's the, yeah. the 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 best part. I think it's it's to remember. Yeah, and the also very beautiful to remember, that, to remember that you can. The thing that I've always felt, and I still feel now, the thing that I love about drawing is is that you I think of it as almost like I'm uh, I always call it like free magic you know it's just something that anyone like I, I can just sorry I can just pick up this blank piece of paper and 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 draw something on it and just make a thing you know like this mm -hmm. this 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 was just a piece of white paper like that and I just chose to turn it into something And actually that was completely free, you know, it, well, it just cost yeah. me a pen and a piece of paper and I can make whatever extraordinary thing I want. And, and I've always found that to be, I've always had a, a kind of defiant attitude. I think like, I don't really like authority figures and I don't, <laughs> I don't really deal well with being told what to do and those sort of things. And, and to me, it's, it is kind of like an act of defiance where you like, Hey, you know, you can tell me that I've got to stay in my home and I can't leave my house but if I've got a pen and a paper, I can make anything I like, you know? So I, I think hopefully that, that mentality maybe is sparked that in people being like, oh shit, I'm stuck in my flat now. I can't go out. I can't go and, uh, you know, I can't go and watch this band or this movie or this football game, or I can't go and buy a magazine or do these things that I think I need to consume to entertain my brain, you know, whereas yes. actually you can 
create something yourself, which is to me way cooler, you know, yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. just, yeah, just pick up the piece of paper and, and you can make anything, anything you think of and no one's going to stop you, you know? So yeah, it's, that was the, the coolest part of it. Just hit, yeah. Just hearing people who were, who'd said, Oh, Hey, I used to draw, you know, I used to draw when I was a kid, but I haven't drawn for 10 years, but now I've just started drawing again because of this thing. So, and hopefully they've kept drawing. That would be the coolest part if they were still, everyone's still making cool artwork. But, That's so yeah. good, Richie. And I have the last question. Cool. I, because this is not an interview, but I wrote some guidelines just. Yeah, put, no, that's great. Just yeah. to put, and Look. I have a lot of things, but I think it's time to, to finish. Uh, but I have um, a question. Uh, do you have a record collection? Um, yeah, kind of, I do, yeah. Okay. I, I've actually, yeah, no, go on, go on. No, that's not the question. It's just, just oh, like I, I, say, no, I, mean, I don't if, have records, but. If you're talking physical, physical vinyl records. Vinyl I, or, or CD or, or, or tape. Yeah, I used to, I went from, of course, um, buying tons and tons of CDs for years. And then when I moved here, I packed them all into boxes and I've never even unpacked them because I just listen to Spotify all the time. And, you know, I, and I didn't even have a CD player here. So I've got upstairs just boxes and boxes of CDs. And every once in a while, I think, oh yeah, I'm, I might as well just sell them because I'm not using them. But then as soon as I open them and look at them, I'm just like, ah, oh, no, I can't sell those because they're all like, stuff that I still love. So no, no. I still have this, the, those CDs taking up space. But then recently, only within the last year, I um, finally bought a record player, which I've set. Okay. That was part of the, you know, I said I kind of reworked my studio and kind of set up in a new way. One of the things that I always wanted in here was a record player. So finally bought a record player, set speakers up over here, mm -hmm. dug out all of my old records. And I have been buying, yeah, started to buy some new, Okay. Records since. Fine, fine. The the question I want to know uh, is if you remember the first record you listen or you get, or or the first record you felt in love. I mean, maybe it's the rec not the first record mm -hmm. you 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 bought buy. Or bought, yeah. But, uh, maybe the first record you had, you have, you had. The few record you have, if um, you remember. That's really hard. I think I remember what what was my first record, <laughs> and maybe it's too different. But... I, do you know what? I think the reason I find it I I find it hard to remember because when I was a kid, I would always copy tapes yeah. all the time. So I I I borrow a record, copy them, and then I'd always make my own covers for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Me too. I, I have I have my tapes here. Yeah. So it's hard. I can't remember. I can't really remember the transition from going from that to owning a, a real the real ones. You know, they were. They, yeah, yeah. Wow. I probably was just, was just copying them for a long, long time. I probably was couldn't afford them to buy real ones and would just yeah just borrow tapes from people and then meticulously draw covers for them or <laughs> cut things out and and i really i love doing that too i really enjoyed that process of making it's your, it's your job now <laughs> yeah right exactly yeah and i love that i took a lot of pride in it actually making making them but wh when i was i don't yeah i don't i don't really remember it might come to me i don't really remember what the first records or tapes I remember it was my first tape was uh, my birthday, my eight eight birthday, I think eight, eight or, or nine. Uh, my dad uh, gave me a, a a tape recorder and tape player, and I said, "Well, but I need I need a tape to put inside." Yeah, and he, he told me, "Here is your gift." And he told me a, a tape I lost from Rick Astley. Ah, yes. Well, I just as just <laughs> just as you were about to say that, I remembered. I can tell you, I do remember. I think what my first tape was. 
as as you described as you described that i started really, really? i started it, suddenly this memory came into my mind because i because um, i'm from aries i'm from aries so yeah yeah, yeah, you remember. Here's the thing. <laughs> here's my the father, thing. My, my father, As you described it, this this memory just popped into my head of being <laughs> bought my first tape. And as I remembered what it was, I, I have it. you still have it. Uh, uh, I have it here. Mm. <laughs> we can play. <laughs> uh, I, I have it here. I don't remember where. Yes. Yes, there he is. What is what is album? But in, that's uh, great. Uh, that's a great record. Look at it. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, the, well, the thing, the, the thing was my. Okay, it's me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my well, father, I thought, as as you said, as you said, um, as you started describing that thing of being like. Uh, well, eight years old, did you say? And being yeah, and, eight, eight or nine, yeah. And having that record, I a, a memory popped into my mind, and I remembered what the tape was, a, a cassette tape that I was bought, and I then had the realization of how terrible it is, and that I was imagining as you were telling your story, I thought you were then going to say like, and the record was Slayer, Rain and Blood, or some cool thing, you know, and but you didn't, so I can now tell my story. My. But so mine was. <laughs> I, I remember, asked, and I asked for this as well. It was um, MC Hammer. Oh. And it was the, but it wasn't even his first, uh, it wasn't even his first album that Please Hammer Don't Hurt Him. It was his second album, okay. uh, which was uh, Too Legit to Quit, which had the Adams Family song that he yeah. made on it. But I was all about it. And I was like, what do you want for Christmas? MC Hammer. And, but my nan, my grandmother bought it for me. Yeah, I think she was even in hospital. It was like a, she was in hospital at the time, and she and she wouldn't have known what it was. But she'd ask my parents, "What can I buy for Richard?" Well, they wouldn't have called me Richie; they would have called me Richard. What can I buy for Richard? And they must have told her like, the, <laughs> "This he wants this MC Hammer tape." And I remember going to the hospital and then her giving me my Christmas present, and I was stoked. I was so happy. But yeah, yeah I, and I don't think I still have it. it Maybe it's somewhere at my parents' house in an attic somewhere, but I don't think I have the MC Hammer tape. <laughs> super, super different bands, you know, but yeah. I, I, I just want to ask, it's, it's, it's simple, it's, it's fine. Because I remember my father when, when give me the tape, I was to the shop, to record st shop, and I asked for, for something for, for my son. And, I know. <laughs> and and I felt in love. I felt in love yeah. with that tape. Okay, yeah, I, I was seven or eight years. That that was fine for me. Rick Astley, wow, awesome, you know. And my first rock band was Aerosmith. So, yeah, yeah, but that's the thing. Like, but Rick Astley, those yeah, those those pop sounds are like to to yeah. a kid seven or eight years old those sounds are delicious you know they're perfect yeah, yeah, yeah and then you then you start i i super definitely easy, do that super easy to win. loved that that era that specific era of pop music mm -hmm. in the 80s exactly that the stock aiken and waterman yeah. stuff yeah. was amazing to us as kids and just record all of it off the off the radio charts like every sunday they have the charts on and record all of those songs and then you start to listen to yeah things like aerosmith and bon jovi and def leppard and guns and roses and things which are like Kind of aggressive and heavy, but still melodic and accessible. And yeah. Again. First, we need melodic, then grunge, yeah. then maybe punk rock, hardcore. You know, yeah. I, I grew up with that, and then you must to to listen black metal, heavy metal, uh, that metal. I, but you need the one. You need the one to get to the next. You know, so you needed Rick Astley to always, always. I know a lot of people that only listen the same band every day. And I need I need to to discover bands every day, and, and must be different each other. You know, like for me the music yeah. is, is that, and music is love. Music is uh, listen everything, and think about how is every music is uh, composed or what feels what feelings have that song. So yeah. So that that that's it, Richie. That's it. I think that's it. Right.
I hope, I hope people from Moments are happy with with this talk, and I hope you enjoy it. A uh, great time. Absolutely. For me, it was super beautiful to to see you for first time and talk about things. And it's I been an absolute pleasure. Great to get to know you. Yeah. Thank you. I hope we can meet you in person very soon in festivals or whatever. Definitely. But in the moment, take care and work a lot and please be in touch. Okay. Absolutely. Definitely. Richie, thank you Thanks for your so time. Much. Have a good night. Bless you. Well, pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.